There are hundreds of thousands to millions of gamers boycotting titles from narrative consultation companies, and it doesn't look like that is going to change anytime soon. And there is a new title coming out called Flintlock The Siege of Dawn, which is filled to the brim with D. EI narratives, of course, Sweet Baby Inc. helped on it, but now the media is trying their very best to shill for this game, saying it is an amazing title that deserves a big audience. I have a few things to show off, but if you enjoy the content I create, follow me on social media, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, of course, I have talked about this game a handful of times. At this point, it seems like another potentially mediocre game to release. They really haven't showed off a lot of the gameplay throughout the teasers and trailers. They've really just been showing like the main character and her animal companion and ooh, her shooting in a cinematic like that to me doesn't get me very hyped um, and doesn't get a lot of people very hyped. But now, of course, that it's relatively close to release, the media is trying their very best to shill for this game because they know it is going to get pummeled. They know the sales are probably not going to be what the developers initially intended, but this is what happens when you hire a narrative consultation company to help you out or you work in any way, shape, or form with anyone affiliated with a narrative consultant company. And of course, Kim Belair has her claws all in this game, but this is a article from The Gamer that we'll start with, and then of course we have a Kotaku and a Dexerto. It says though, Flintlock The Siege of Dawn is a hit in need of a crowd. If a game cannot draw in an audience by itself, um, it probably isn't going to be a hit. Just because you think it's going to be a hit doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be. Of course, this is written by Stacey Henley Massive, so Social justice warrior who, of course, has gone on the defense for these companies over the past couple of months and has really tried her best to attack those angry gamer gators. But it says, I didn't quite know what to expect when I got my hands on Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. I had a hands-off preview a year or two ago and it was intriguing then, but it seems to dip under the radar at every opportunity. Yeah, of course, when you are releasing a title even relatively close to the largest launch of the year, which is Elden Ring Shadow of the Erdtree, you're bound to be overshadowed quite a bit, especially in the news cycle, because everyone is talking about that. And this does release relatively soon. Um, it releases on July 18th, so it's not that far away. It says, though, though I enjoyed my time with it and appreciated the ideas I saw, especially the boldness to drop us in fairly late into the narrative and just tell us it might be tough, have fun with it, I couldn't help but feel Feel a little haunted playing it in a room adorned with Xbox posters surrounded by staff and Xbox lanyards. In the same building, Xbox just rocked the world with its summer showcase while avoiding mentioning its recent layoffs completely. So, of course, taking shots at Microsoft for daring to not, um, you know, address what they think thought should have been addressed, but it says I had never been more glad when I left the preview. Double check that the developers A44 were indeed still independent and breathed a huge sigh of relief as I saw it also coming to PlayStation. So first off, they didn't even know anything about this game. They didn't, they initially thought that it was an Xbox exclusive. They had no idea um, what, you know, systems it was even going to be on, but they say the combat was varied and challenging. Traversal was interesting as you teleported from rift to rift, and the world it created had a much more unique and intrigued purely by virtue of feeling tailored to the game's reality, not copied from elsewhere. Ooh, a developer actually created something that sounds half original. That, to me, would have been very intriguing if it wasn't for the fact that, again, you have sweet baby behind it. And I don't know why the media thinks that this is a good idea, but every outlet is comparing it to a previously released really bad failure of a game. They say here it has the quality to be a hit, but many who played last year's Immortal of Avium said the same thing. That game was really mediocre. And yeah, I mean, the trailers for it looked pretty decent, but actually playing it, it was just a nightmare. So they're basically saying this could be a better version of Immortals of Avium. But we also have Kotaku doing the same 
same exact thing, saying Flintlock Siege of Dawn looks like Forspoken, but actually good this time. I'm sorry, whenever you're going to compare a game to a significantly worse game, like a very bad release that people did not like, I'm not going to get excited saying, oh, it's like Forspoken, but good. That to me still screams trash. And of course, we know that this is a game that leans heavily on, you know, diversity and inclusion. I mean, she's even got the, you know, strong, independent woman, uh, shaved haircut. I mean, this game does not look like it's going to be good. Forspoken was not good. Immortals of Avium is not good. And just because you've got, like, spells and guns mixed together doesn't instantly mean it's going to be amazing. Just because you do more does not mean it is going to be better. We've also got uh, Dexerto saying Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn, a competent Souls-like with a rough demo. This, to me, does not make me feel confident in swiping my credit card for $70. Calling something competent is not a pass. Calling something competent does not mean that it's good. It means it barely squeezed by and got an okay rating. Like, these are not how you market games to people. I mean, if this is what the game is, then okay. It screams trash, but... I mean, clearly players are not very excited for this. As you can see, they've released several teasers and trailers. This one was from two months ago. It has 1K likes to 2.1K dislikes and a couple hundred comments from people saying it just doesn't look very good. It looks mediocre. Like, ugh, why even buy this? just looks okay. Some people even saying it looks unfinished. You have the most recent trailer, which is not getting negatively ratioed yet, but it's really close. It's got 2.5k likes to 2k dislikes. Also, a couple hundred comments saying it kind of looks like Forspoken. Reminds me of that and not in a positive way. Um, maybe this will be okay. Forspoken 2 already out. And hey, maybe this will come out and it will be decent. But we do know that, yes, I mean, SBI and Kim Belair have their claws in this, as you can see. This, um, of course, comes from the DEI Detected website. It says, mentioned the involvement in Edge Magazine. Here's an image. And uh, in the magazine, they were talking about for Flintlock. It was Tops who brought on Kim Belair, the Montreal-based narrative director who has advocated for better representation in stories as a means of bringing new and exciting ideas to games. She took the wonderful base layer Derek had, the world, and just elevated it. So she basically took the final product and made a bunch of changes and, quote, elevated it. That, to me, does not, um, you know, give me any confidence, and it shouldn't give you any confidence either. I mean, Kim Belair has a lot of pull with the games that SBI works on, and I know people like Alyssa Mercante love to say, sweet baby ink doesn't do what you think they do, and they don't have the power you think they do. They do have power, and they do have influence, and they do make a difference when it comes to the final product. You're not going to hire a company for millions of dollars just to completely disregard the advice and the feedback that they're giving you. You've already paid the money, even if you don't like what they have to say, so of of course, in some way, shape, or form, their work at the end of the day is going to make it to a final product, which is why so many people are ultimately boycotting games like this. And I don't think that Flintlock Siege of Dawn is going to sell well. I think it's going to come out and it is going to be completely dead on arrival. Again, there are over 400,000 people who follow DEI Detected. And uh, those are people who are right now boycotting SBI and narrative consultation products and are not buying into this BS anymore. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.